Well, my friend, I hope we get it figured out, and I hope we get it figured out soon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hella Greg Live, or the Church of Hella, part of the Super Network. I am Greg. Find me everywhere at Hella Greg, or at hellagreg.com for all your Church of Hella needs. TM. Ding. Ding. Uh, today, I have Jesse with me. Hello, sir. Hello, I'm Jesse with me. Yes. It doesn't say that in the bottom right <laughs> corner, but uh, but that's the official title. That's where you can find me, where it says that you can find me. Yeah. Cromulent Jesse, that's me. See anything that says Cromulent Jesse, that's me. If it doesn't say Cromulent Jesse, yo. It's not me. That mm-hmm. ain't me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Having keyboard issues right now. <clears throat> yeah, hey man, fight the power, supply. You know, that's what I'm all about. Yep, um, I, I'm going to do it. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you for being here. Um, this is going to be a f- another fun episode. <laughs> Zoom. Thanks, man. You know, I think my sub to your channel lapsed yesterday, and I don't know how. How dare you? Yeah, I don't know how. Like, I... I, I am highly offended. Yeah, you should be. It was like a seven-month streak. It's gone. No. Uh, I, I think the streak doesn't matter. You'll still get your little color thing as long as you've done that amount of months. So... Hmm. All right. But we'll all see the fact that it says <clears throat> two-month streak on there next yeah. month. <laughs> Look like a real asshole. Just kidding. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Um, so <laughs> don't worry, guys. I just Phantom of the Opera. This shit. <laughs> I, I, I wish the camera was tilted just a little more so they could see. <laughs> There's keyboards right here, guys. Just use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> There's not keyboards there. That's the thing. Here That's we go. What Watch. I want ready? You to see. It's gone. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't need your damn keyboard. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, this one doesn't work either. Oh. I'll see you on my phone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I appreciate everybody for being here. Thank you for watching on YouTube uh, tomorrow, if, it's, if that's what you're doing. Uh, thank you for listening to the podcast tomorrow, if that's what you're doing. Um, yeah. Don't need that damn keyboard. We already said that. I'm just getting caught up on the phone. We covered that already. Um, so, yeah, uh, chat it up, earn some points, have some fun. Today we're talking sports strangeness part two. So uh, we're going to get everybody together. We're going to kick it off. Um, ah, sports pun. Yeah, sports puns. Um, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with the Olympics or do you want to start with uh, – actually, you know what? I'll, I'll just cover FIFA a little bit. Um, I don't have a whole lot on FIFA, mostly because what I learned about FIFA, I learned from John Oliver. Okay. And he did like a really – it's incredibly corrupt and – Yeah, but they do – Broken they, organization. They like – create their own they, they they travel with their own government so like when the world cup happens they like they go and they establish their own judicial system hmm. um that's outside of whatever this country's judicial system is so like there was a um there was a there was a, pl- a player or a or a referee who was caught cheating and he was uh, like death he was he <laughs> it was an, i i, I want to say life in prison wow and it was uh two days from the time he was caught to the time he was sentenced and, and, and FIFA, like, during the World Cup. And it was just like, boom, boom. That was it. Dude, Homer could have been in a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sports ball. Sports ball. Um, yeah, so there was, like, I mean, they're, they're super, super corrupt. A um, lot of, like, payoffs to get, uh, to get the World Cup to where, they, to where it's supposed to go. And, like, the conditions in, what, in which they, like, establish that is just not great. Like, um the Qatar World Cup that's coming up is like I I guess I think that one already happened. Did it? I think so. But there or maybe it is the one coming up. But it, it's I mean like Let me just look that up. <laughs> they're building um they're building stadiums and stuff like that and they're using slave labor to build the stadiums and there's been like collapses in the stadiums that are being built because they're being built so shoddily and so by quickly unqualified builders by people who don't know what they're doing and there's been there's been there's been death on death on death trying to like i, I want to say something to the effect of like 25 people or so died like in a year constructing these stadiums that's a lot of people man that's a lot of people in a short period of time working on one project you know what I mean? Don't disagree. Um, and then it's like you know, a fucking Hoover Dam. Yeah, but and it's not 1938 or whatever. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. It's they're they're just a super super corrupt organization, which sucks because they they you know they're in charge of one of the world's most popular sports, and ping pong. Is that the number one sport in the world? I be- if I had to guess, yeah, yeah, probably. I I, I would say. <laughs> 
I, I would say FIFA would be in charge of, uh, uh, or you know, uh, if, if, I know Eddie's not out there because I can see the viewer count, but um, I'm not looking at you. Either. I know, just a real shot in the nards. It's good to not be able to see it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, if Eddie was here, he'd 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 harp on me for calling it uh, soccer, but that we're in the United States. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought this, this was America. America. Yeah, we're we're in the United States, so I'm gonna call it soccer. If you got a problem with it, uh, you know, be here. Talk to Roger Goodell. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, do, you know, they're just like they're they're in charge of that across the world. I would I would assume that that was probably the largest sport, just because it can be played almost anywhere by almost anyone. I want to do it before Eddie gets here. You mean hand egg? Hand egg, yeah. Take <laughs> take that. Your face. Something egg. something La Jolla. Um, (laughs) um, so uh moving on from moving on from soccer because you know like i said you can you can watch john oliver's thing on it and it's pretty good and i I don't really recommend john oliver very much um but that that particular also that one time when he bought like a couple million dollars of medical debt and just relieved it yeah that's pretty cool I mean, they also named like a sewage treatment facility after him. He's into it. Yeah, he he he, he steered right into the skid on that. Took it in stride. Mm-hmm. He Didn't was, he show up for the inauguration? Yeah, or some they, shit like that. Like, yeah, they like tried to punk him and like have the inauguration, and he was like, "Oh, oh man, it. yeah, <laughs> kidding me? I was on Community. How much lower could I go? <laughs> uh, I was written off Community. How much lower could Damn I it. go? <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, moving on from moving on from soccer, uh. I want to talk. Want to talk about uh, rigged Olympics? Like so much doping, dude. So, so much, much doping. doping. It was insane. Like crazy amounts of doping. I want some doping. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the fun doping though. Oh. Like there was. Um, it's like the locked in a room and you're injected every hour on the hour. Uh, Ouchie! Please don't hurt me anymore. Doping? No, it's just like testosterone and like blood doping and stuff like that uh the, the old lance armstrong yeah yeah um like there was a there was a, a runner who uh broke a world record at the time like in the 90s you know you remember michael johnson yeah like, what, what wasn't him michael johnson was dope as fuck that gold chain those thighs that were like bigger than your entire body yeah, yeah bigger yeah, yeah. than my waist yeah, yeah um yeah no he 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 raced against michael johnson and he, I think he was from Canada, and he, I mean, afterwards he was Let like, me "Look it up." <laughs> oh wait, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Keyboard's still not working, but it was worth a try. <laughs> um, yeah, he was like, after after the Olympics and everything, he he came clean, and they like stripped him of his medal and everything. But yeah, that, like that's that's got to be frustrating. To be Michael Johnson in that situation, to have lost to the dude. Yeah, to was his name Ben Johnson. Yes. Yep. Hero or villain? Ben Johnson and the dirtiest race in history. Yeah, he ran it. He won it. He he admitted afterwards that he'd been that he'd been uh, using PEDs, and like they stripped him of his medal. But like, Me, it, I just used PEZ out of a Chewbacca dispenser. Ow! 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 These are it's testosterone tablets. <laughs> but my, is this a fun way to enjoy them? <laughs> that is correct. Um, you know, what's up? What's up, VRM? How are you? Um, so, yeah, there were one of the one, like the, um, remember the, the Russian doping scandal of like, what was it, 2016? Yeah, it was like fairly recent. Yeah. Yeah. So basically. In the same Olympics where they were just like having way too much sex. Like yeah. like an uncontrollable amount of sex. They were like, we can't even keep up with the demand of condoms. Yeah, so These Olympians are sexing so much. They're just out here raw dogging. We it. thought we were here to make golds. You guys were here to make fucks. Yeah, and they're at like imagine just being like the product of a Olympic sex party. I mean, I'm not like the shot putter just in there with all the gymnasts. Like, hey. hey. Olympic orgies. Yeah. As long as it's a group of consenting adults. I mean, hey. Can't yeah. imagine a more fit group of people to be around. <laughs> Even the shot putters, right? Just That's a, like a world class athlete. Yeah, man. just a bunch of attractive people hanging out together, like 
at the at, in the prime of their life. Like, yeah, no, that that that. that. I definitely wouldn't be invited. I, you you already you, the things you use to describe them. <laughs> Attractive people in the time of their life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I may be I may be attractive in a person, but I'm not. Uh, what was that third thing? <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, there was. came when she heard condoms. <laughs> there you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good. Pract- I see you're cooking. Practice safe cooking. Use a condiment. <laughs> um, so they were. There was this um, Russian runner, and she like, she was what they called a, uh, like an untouchable athlete, and that meant all her tests were faked. She was on like a strict PED schedule, that, like that was given to her by her doctor and her coach. Of course. And all that. Like all the testing and everything was all covered up by the Russian government because they have they have their own. So they do understand that the Olympics is an amateur competition, right? Well, it was until we started sending guys like the dream team out there. And then what's the point of it being amateur? That's literally the only sport that. uh, Right. No. No. Yeah, you're right. I was going to say, look at the. I mean, look at all the international competition that has that has um, professionals p- competing in it. You know what I mean? I mean, there's not really like a. It used to be a contest of amateurs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then you know, guys like Jim Thorpe had to come along and ruin that for everybody because he's a professional athlete Just out there. Dominate. Comp- yeah, but was he a was he a professional athlete when he won Olympic golds? I don't think so. No. Yeah, I think that if yeah, he did and, it without and, and shoes and shit. Yeah, I was gonna say and and and. Mad respect to Jim Thorpe. Yeah. And I, they, you're like, they, I didn't mean to put his name in my mouth like that. Let me put some respect on yeah, his Yeah, yeah. They actually um, gave his medals back to him because I think they stripped him of his medals at one point. But they gave his medals back to him. Or they didn't award his medals for something, but they gave them to his family posthumously, like in the late 80s. Um, Was the Russian sprinter Alicia Montaño? No. It was... Uh, I can't remember her name, but uh, Yulia Stepanova. Yes. Okay. Yeah, her. So she uh, married this guy, and he worked for Rusada, which is spelled P Y C A D A, but in Cyrillic. Um, but it's Rusada, which is Russia's anti-doping agency. Change the lights to pink. Change the lights to pink. I got that. Ah, uh, that's pink. Yeah. Pink, pink enough. I don't think they get any pinker than that. <laughs> the, move along, boys. That <laughs> belly's not going to get any pinker. Um. So yeah, so they there. I mean, so much, so much doping. Like the entire Russian team. Well, like I mean, sixteen people officially were found guilty by the International Olympic Committee um, from one Olympics, and like not over like a decade or anything like that. Right, but that was just right. one of the. That was just like the 2014 Winter Olympics. The Russians were just like, ah, fuck. Yeah. Um. So they was they. Like, sorry, not sorry. Hmm. As a country, they're recovering for like massive amounts of steroid use, like um, anabolic steroids, EPO or blood doping, testosterone, turnabolin, and parabolin. Which, so blood doping, correct me if I'm wrong, is just like, it's like you're getting you're getting a transfusion of your own blood, but it's like super oxygenated and like it's running through. You're getting like a a blood transfusion where it's just taking your blood, oxygenating it super hard, and then putting it back in your body, so it like runs it super crazy efficiency right is that that's as like Lance underst- armstrong thing yeah as is my understanding like yes. i like, didn't do drugs i just the, carbonated yeah. my blood <clears throat> more or less i think so yes but i i um <laughs> I, I don't think it's exactly, i'm sure that's an oversimplification right but I, I i think there's other stuff that gets added to it i see or i think i want to say it's something like you're you and I, I i could be way off mark i could be way off base with this but um, I, I thought it was something like where you do the you do the steroids or whatever, and they take your blood then, and then give you transfusions of your own blood with that you had when. So like it's like slow release steroids, but so you're not just getting directly the medicine; you're getting your own blood back, right? With steroids in it, right? Which again, don't know for certain. It says just like if I when I type in how does blood doping work. Uh-huh. It says, by increasing the number of red blood cells, blood doping causes the blood to thicken. This thickening forces the heart to work harder than a normal pump uh, blood throughout the body. As a result, blood doping raises the risk of a blood clot. But, you know, like, you know it makes it to where it 
serves the muscles <laughs> and everything else better. So right, because bad for your enough. heart, good for your legs and arms. And because it's not tr- it's not fighting for the nutrients in the blood, the red blood cells in the in the blood. It's every, everybody has enough. So you're sludging up your blood. That's the idea. It's like thickening your blood. Mm. Yeah. Mm. This guy was due for an oil change long ago. <laughs> Ugh, God. Like that video I sent you of that guy cleaning out his pipe with the air compressor. Oh, I hated that, that so much. Oh, I know, me too. I hated it. Um, but I could smell <laughs> that video. Yeah. Um, so coaches and doctors, like I said, both gave drugs to, the, to, to what, what was her name? Stepanova. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lalilia. Uh, Lalilia. Stepanova. Yulia. Yulia. Um, she specialized in the 800 meter race, but she said she wasn't the only one. Um, she was what was again what was called an untouchable athlete, meaning her tests were uh, were fake, and she was allowed to take whatever she was going to win Russia a medal. That was their that was their deal was like whatever wins Russia a medal. Trust us, once we melt down all that gold, I'm telling you, man, Russia's yeah. going to be a rich country. <laughs> um, she went to an anti doping seminar that they had that like all the athletes had to go to, um, where she met Vitali, and they're like, okay, Yulia, every everybody, any questions? Anybody, Yulia? She no. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, but she met she met Vitaly there um, and, and married him. And he's the one who worked for um, Rusada. And she said he said 15 minutes into their first date. Because he's like he's the guy that does the testing. Yeah. Like he's the guy who tests all these athletes. Right. Said so 15 minutes into their first date. She's like, yeah, I take testosterone. I dope like it's. It's it's all good. You'll pass me. This and he's no like problem. he's like what? And she goes yeah. The government lets me. And he's like what? She's like yeah. Rusada's in on it. And he's like what? <laughs> and like imagine having to go to work the next morning yeah. after having after hearing all that. You're like hey, I just went out with a chick who gets away with this shit. And she said you guys are helping. And they're like oh yeah. It's like she shouldn't have told you. But now that you know, shut the fuck up for just like a little while. Just like until we get the because like come on, we can Reggie Bush him and just not send back <laughs> the the golds. Um, <laughs> like I just feel I you just keep feel, that Heisman, Reggie Bush. You right, keep that Heisman means something to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, his crusade um, to keep sports fair and win medals clashed with hers to win medals. Um, like you mean he wanted to do things the right way, and she was like, "No, I'm cheater. This is trust me. This is the best way." Right. So like oh, for for a couple years, he was like fighting against all the doping in the in 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 the sport in in russian sports and was like it's like mr and mrs smith right it's kind of it's yeah. kind of mr and mrs smith like except there i don't i i doubt well i mean it was russia so there could have been sweet gun fights fights. In their underwear that was but, a sweet that was a sweet gunfight um overall mediocre movie great <laughs> gunfight yeah um but he said it, it over like 2 years 2 or 3 years he was like filing petitions with um the World Doping Agency and like the IOC and like look 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 at all this evidence I have. Of I want to work for the World Doping Agency in the testing department. Not just <laughs> angry and acne ridden <laughs> all the time. Ah, my breasts are tender and I hate you. Yeah, I mean that's happening anyway. <laughs> it's just called getting older. Um. <laughs> I guess this is growing. Uh. So. <laughs> So they filed for divorce, like, because that's, you know. No way, Jose. Yeah. <laughs> no way, Vitali. <laughs> um, so but you are always forgetting my name. They, uh, like, two days before, or not, I'm sorry. She got hurt and, and therefore couldn't go on into the Olympics. And as a result of that, like, when she was, she's doing her workout routine and her workout regimen, but she's not Olympic bound anymore. She's still she's just rehabbing, but as an athlete, you still have to submit tests to the doping agency and all that. So she submits a test like normal, same. I mean, nothing's changed over the last how many years, and she gets a dirty test back, and now she's not allowed to compete. Now she's blacklisted because she's testing dirty. And it's because the government is like, well, you're not gonna win a shit. Why would we help you anymore? Exactly. Good luck with your dirty tests, dumbass. Yeah, you're not getting you fucking cheater. Look at this cheater over here, you dirty cheater. Yeah, exactly. Pretty pretty much that. And she's so she calls her husband two days before they're supposed to file for divorce. Before that shit's like finalized. And she's like, let's take these sons of bitches down. <laughs> and um, and what, it, he's just down sauce. Yeah. 
he was like, he's the dude, the look on his face in this interview, like the tears of joy that he was, that he had when he was taught. Cause he didn't show a whole lot of emotion, right? But the tears of joy that he had when he was like, I realized somebody on, there's somebody on my side. My wife is on my side and wants to help me take this down and keep sports fair. <laughs> well, no, I mean, she like, so what she did was she recorded um, interactions with her teammates, admitting that they were doping, doping uh-huh. during the uh, Olympics. Um, her doctor getting her back on the, helping her get back on the regiment. Mm-hmm. Um, her coach helping her get in touch with the doctor to get her Dang, back on the regiment. Dude, snitches get stitches. Like, I can't imagine what they get in Russia. They, dude, they live, they live in the United States now. And, and, and they in, have to. In, in like a one bedroom apartment. And like the, when they were doing the interview, they're like, in we're not. Branson, Ohio. Dude, they were like, <laughs> Bronson, Ohio. <laughs> hey ma, how about some cookies? No dice. This ain't over. Um, no, they, they said they won't tell where they live because for, I mean, for their safety. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you guys found him. Like, if you guys, if you fucking, if 60 Minutes found you, goddamn KGB can find you. Yeah. Like. Or did you come to 60 Minutes? Yeah. Yes, we'd like to keep talking about this. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> they just put on ski masks and have a voice modulator. No, they, they sat there like. They, no, I know. I was thinking delocated. Yeah. You're in the witness relocation program, but you do a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like I said, she went full on undercover. Um, and the way she did it, like she said, she held her phone like this what? and she was, she was like, I, she, I am very inconspicuous. She said, she goes, she goes, I threw a jacket over my arm and, and just uh, held my, and like has all these videos of like her doctor handing her the steroids and telling her like the, the regiment to be on and wow. her teammate, like the, so in the, in one race she took, Yulia took first and this other lady took third you're like somehow second and third she fell and then she got back up and <laughs> but she she like they took first and third and like got her on tape talking about yeah that race we were we were all on drugs hell yeah we were i actually drank some of the steroids that night i don't know why i just wanted to try it i injected between my toes for fun now it does nothing <laughs> I, um but yeah so she uh, four athletes they said after the investigation that Four athletes won gold in the Sochi Olympics while on performance-enhancing drugs. And that's just the gold. That doesn't count any of the silver or bronze that they won as well. Wow. Or how many people they bumped out of contention. Who and how many it. times their fucking judge gave a gymnast a zero? Come on. It's always a zero from the <clears throat> Russian judge. <laughs> they were, Well, the Russian judges were extra harsh, and that's part They of were it. also on steroids. Like, we don't know why, but now we're just mad. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Welcome to Russia. Everybody on steroids. Um, yeah, the head of the Russian doping agency, uh, he he flipped on the whole thing and was like, "Yeah, like we were told to do all this." And they said they'd take us to the gulag if not. They said there were FSB agents, which is the Russian FBI, that were that were the doping agents who would go around and take the tests and be like, "Oh, okay, you get the, you get you get the positive, you get the negative." Like those like th- Russian doping Oprah. Yeah, like, but, but, but... <laughs> you get a pass test. Like, you get a pass test. But, like, the Russian men in black, you know, who are, like, they're just, like, you Pulling know... Pulling strings behind the scenes. Exactly. And so, I mean, I think is... Like, how scary would that have to be to be one of these athletes who's, like... Now your name's out there. Because, like I said, the head of the agency's out there. He's, like, he's right. talking about it. He won't... He won't meet with anybody face to face, but he's doing like Skype calls and stuff and talking about yeah. this stuff. And he's like, yeah, he said, I've got the proof. Like I took the proof with me. I have the proof that the FSB was involved in this. And then, the, you know, it goes all the way up to the top of government and sports in Russia. I just imagine the that scene in Pineapple Express where They're Dale Denton's to- explaining it to the female cops. Like, oh, hell yeah. I think I know that bitch. And she's like getting on his side and Saul Silver comes out like. Like was he, oh he tries to stop it and gets hit by the car and shit All right is that what happened throw uh, the icy on whatever happens he's like carrying the icies out oh that's and, right yeah, no no she was on our side yeah yeah it's like they're finally flipping him <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah I think I know that bitch <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yes that bitch <laughs> um so yeah that was just a little that was a little taste of the Russian do- Russian doping agency or sca- the Russian doping scandal of what was it 2016 or whatever fun yeah I mean it's crazy to me that. 
like okay, so the Olympics, like you said, it used to be it used to be an amateur competition, right? And then, I remember actually in high school, I wrote because I you know I used to like run cross country and shit, and mm-hmm. um, I I had a paper like what I wanted to do like like as a career. And I put that I wanted to like be in the Olympics. And my teacher was like, well, oh, that's not really a professional career. Wouldn't let me write the paper on it because of that. I mean, <clears throat> I should have pointed out the dream team too. You're right. Well, where were, where were my skills and argument in the ninth grade? How, and how often have I made the joke? Like, you know, throw a paper ball into a basket and somebody's like, whoa, nice shot. And I'm like, thanks. was going to go professional, but I wanted to keep right, my options right, open right. for the Olympics. Like, yeah, I made that. I make that joke once a day. All right. And, but it used to, so it used to be like an amateur only thing. And I think as professional sports leagues were made and took off, they kind of had to either dis- have much shittier athletes be the world class ones or allow them in. Right. Like, I mean, you've got, you've got the, the guys who played on the dream team. You've got the entire NBA in the United States. The, that is not. Like if they can't play in the for 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 Team USA, that is not an accurate representation of the talent of Team USA. And they're kind of doing that now too, because a lot of NBA guys don't want to be part of the Olympic <coughs> team, so like college guys are. Yeah, it's like NBA slash college players. Well, now. so like that was like the miracle on ice. The Russians were like a a a, a like a laser focused hockey team, mm-hmm. and they moved the puck and they cycle like that. And even when they came to the NHL in like the early nineties. They had that same style, like the Detroit Red Wings of the early 90s had this like cycle puck always to the open spot, always like triangle offense type motion. Yeah. And then the shot, you never really knew where the shot was coming from. Like how I play FIFA. Pretty much, yeah. Like it's always, it's balls always in motion. The puck's always in motion. Don't dribble, just get it to the open guy. And that's what their coach, that's what the Team USA coach was trying to drive home is that we're going to, we're going to, don't chase the puck, get ahead of it. Yeah, we're playing zone, bitch. Not so much that, but it was more like outwork the guy that's gonna yeah, outwork yeah. you. And and but what he did was he had a bunch of college athletes. He had a bunch of college kids and like guys who couldn't make it in the NHL or who hadn't made it to the NHL yet. And that's kind of what that's what made it so special is that these were these were big Russian like grown ass men like yeah I've seen the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> is this what it feels like when I do Star Wars jokes to you? Um, yeah, like, it, and you know, so they've got these, you know, these professional athletes and these college kids against them. But that's what it used to actually be like. And you had to be a college athlete, or you could, you had to be a. You had to know the knuckle puck. Yeah, quack, quack, <laughs> quack. Um, but then so like. Video. <laughs> um, so I mean, just to stay on the ice a little bit, Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan. Why? Dude, Why? I, I kind of don't want to make that joke anymore. I mean, you can feel free. I'm I mean, not, it's just like it's like yelling, "Ah, oh, what's in the box?" I'm, it's so detached from me that it might as well be fiction. Right, but it's it is terrible, dude. No, I wa- like watching it because like, she's like she's fairly young, if I'm not mistaken, too. Yeah. Like she's in like her early twenties or something. She's a child, like yeah. what it feels like at this point. So January sixth of nineteen ninety four, uh, U.S. Women's Figure Skating practice. Uh, Nancy Kerrigan uh, just came off the ice having just finished uh, and she was attacked by a man with a blunt object. He smashed her in the leg above the knee and ran. And that was her uh, right le- right leg. What year did you say it was? 1994. Okay. So she'd have been 25. There you go. Yep. Mid 20s. Yeah. And, and that's where you get the heart, the like the iconic and heartbreaking. Why, why, why? And it just like. I mean, how many times have I made that joke? Right. And, right. But like watching it again, like as an adult, I Tanya can't... Harding's feathered ass hair tells me everything I need to know is she is guilty. <laughs> Why couldn't Oksana Bayul be there to back t- t- uh, Nancy up? Dude, okay, so we'll get to Oksana Bayul, but um, for for the for those of you who just weren't like alive at the time or didn't understand this, this was fucking huge, dude. I'm just like, picturing Oksana Bayul like catching it going. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Bends it over her own leg. <laughs> Leave Nancy alone. <laughs> Nancy's with me. <laughs> why, Are we making why, Oksana by why? old jokes right now? <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> January 6th, 1994. All right, cool, um, cool. Uh, uh, Oksana, where are you? <laughs> so, uh, again, this this was fucking huge. And, like, 
I don't think people realize how big it was, but it was literally like on every news channel from the time. I was seven and I like, like I, I clearly did not grasp significance, but I remember like my parents being like, Oh really? What the fuck? One of the, the documentary that I watched about this, they were, they said it brought so many people to the, to the sport. It was probably the best thing that ever happened for figure skating. And the worst part is Tanya Harding got like, she didn't get one red hot cent from it. Yeah. Because she got banned for life right. for, for, over this. But She had to make her money in celebrity boxing. <laughs> Quote unquote, celebrity boxing. Or being a panel on those, uh, being a panelist on those uh, uh, world's dumbest criminal shows. She's, she does those? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. They said that like, one of the guys was like, yeah, they bring her into like a drag club. Like when she was still, you know, in her thirties or whatever. Yeah. And they'd be like, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Tanya Harding and everybody would cheer because they were there to see her because everybody wanted to see this slow motion car crash. And I was yeah. like, God, what a terrible way to describe somebody. Yeah. Wow. Fuck, dude. I hope I never get described as a slow motion car wow. crash. Like, fuck that. Just, that hurt. I got secondhand burns. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal. It's rough. Um, this but again, it w- there was nightly coverage of the whole thing unfolding um, f- every night from th- from the day of the attack to the end of February. Uh, basically, when the Olympics started, people wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. So you said that it was her boyfriend who hired a bodyguard who found a dude to do it. So right. was Tanya in like told her boyfriend, we need to fucking find the guy or was <laughs> was it like one of those like, man, if only someone would bash Nancy Kerrigan's knees in and her boyfriend's like. Well, happy Valentine's Day early, babe. So, basically, what happened was, well, I, I, I don't know. Right. But what... The world may never know. Yeah. So, basically, he, they there was a meeting between her boyfriend and the bodyguard. And he fronted the bodyguard two Gs. And was like, okay. That's not a lot of money. In 1994? It's like five Gs. <laughs> Still, he gave him five Gs. Like what? What do you? How much do you really pay to get somebody's leg smashed in? A celebrity's legs? A world class athlete's legs? I'm gonna want to pay off my mortgage for that. Okay, but the only reason the only reason that you know she's a world class <laughs> athlete and celebrity now is because of this incident. Because who? I don't disagree with you, but still, at the same time, someone's like, "Hey, I want you to go bash this Olympian's legs." Here's twenty six hundred bucks. You don't I'm, tell them they're an Olympian, then the price goes up. Yeah. You're just like, look, there's this chick that's giving my wife trouble on the circuit, and I need you to go take care of it. Fair. And it, plus, the, her bodyguard was like, uh, listen, guys, because he didn't do it himself. Right. He went and hired a couple of dudes and was like, hey, I got 900 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I got 250 bucks a piece that says you guys can, can go bash this leg, and I'll supply the stick. Like, they're like, whoa, that's almost 500 bucks. I thought you said stick. This is just a shock absorber. Yeah, hey, it's, it's it's heavy. It swings just the same. <laughs> um, and so like they went and they it was two weeks before the national championship that they did this. And like I said, I was we were talking about this before we before we started the show. But there was there was a documentary crew there like filming her. Like her road to the Olympics and the national right, championships right, right. and stuff. That's why the video exists. That's why you get the video because it's not like people had cell phones back. It's totally right. like a cell phone video, like you'd yeah, watch yeah. on Reddit right now, and it's it feels kind of weird like seeing it back then. It's yeah. like it's like seeing old pictures of like old selfies. You know, like, what I mean? when they're like, especially like when you see a photo from the '50s, but it was done with a really nice single lens reflex camera. Yeah. Like you can just tell it's really sharp, and like even if it's not colorized, you're like, God damn, even like the clothes kind of match up with some of the like, you know, hipster throwback stuff right now. You're like, fuck, this is, could have been taken yesterday. And yeah. this is, this, this could be 70 some kind, years ago. Some guy's Instagram. I account. saw something on Reddit today, literally where it was like my grandma and grandpa, <clears throat> a picture from the yearbook in 1954. And yeah. I was like, you could have told me is that, that when was the camera in, still went. <laughs> yeah. You could have told me that was like in Brooklyn yesterday. And I'd have been like, yeah, for sure. It was like, it, it was, it was wild to me. So yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. So like it was, it was just crazy. Like, watching how you know watching the reaction and everything but he said basically he got her practicing and stuff and filmed her coming off the ice <clears throat> she stops and she puts on her skate guards and she starts walking down this tunnel and he shuts the camera off because she walked out of the shot okay there you go and he said it it, it couldn't have been more than eight or nine seconds and he heard this shrill scream 
and everybody rushed over there and like he turned the camera back on and came around the corner that's the video that you get like coming up behind her and stuff yeah where she's sitting there laying on the ground crying saying she's scared and she's hurt and she doesn't know what she doesn't understand what happened and she wants to know why and why 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 <clears throat> yeah um and it was crazy like it was just that's just a like a complete legit batshit insane thing to happen like imagine if before this past super bowl who, who i don't even remember tom brady and who was um it was like tom brady and patrick mahomes yeah, were like what, at their home fields practicing and someone bashed their shins yeah in. like if some if if tom brady paid his had uh, Giselle, Giselle pay a, pay a bodyguard to go crack Patrick Mahomes in the knees before the Super Bowl, like that. That's and, but and what's wild to me is yes, they're competing against each other, but they're also competing with each other eventually, and they know that. Well, they've been competing with each other. So what basically what 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 it was is there's like a there was like a circuit, there was a um like a professional skating circuit, mm -hmm. and it was like three events a year or something like that, and then the national championships, and it was fucking ice capades, dude. Right. Um. And that's what they were competing on, and they were getting re gearing up to the national championships, which was two weeks away before this happened. Um, after that was the Olympics, where they would be right teammates for Team USA, and it was like, dude, they, it was like a powerhouse ice skating team. It was that's Michelle was Kwan, Michelle Kwan, and uh, yeah, 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 and and uh, Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding were like the boom, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the highlights of the of their of their ice skating team, and. Um, it, it was kind of, it was crazy because after, I mean, five weeks later, after the attack, she's healed up and she's back on the ice. And they're in, they're in Norway at the practice rink, like warming up and stuff. And they're on the ice together. Like, like I was telling you, they're coming within feet of each other while they're skating and warming up and practicing their routines and doing all this stuff. I think Nancy's like, this fucking bitch, <clears throat> I swear to God, I'm going to slice her neck with my skate. Well... She, uh, when she was practicing at her home rink, she had this like little white, like long sleeve leotard thing with like frill around it, kind of like a little white dress. Uh huh. And that was what she was wearing when she was attacked. That's what she wore when she was on the ice with uh, Tanya Harding. That's it. So I ain't taking no shit from <clears throat> no one. Yeah. I mean, you, you, it's like a little white dress sent such yeah. a big message. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so the, the, you know, if that answers your question, fair enough. But, um, Actions speak louder than words. The 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 that event because it was you know broadcast on TV was one of at the time one of the most bro uh, viewed events ever on on TV. Interesting. In fact, the lady who was talking about it said, uh, "Last Mash, who shot Jr. Uh, one episode of Roots, two Super Bowls, Nancy and Tanya. That was the that was like the most watched events of all time to that point. Impressive." Yeah, they said now it it's was, like all Super Bowls. It was like 125 million people or something watching this, watching figure skating, just just to see what would happen with these. Come two. on, bash her, take your skate off and stab her. <laughs> Easy, Happy Gilmore. <laughs> I was the only guy to ever take my skate off and try and stab somebody. <laughs> um, and so basically, the there was a huge feud kind of boiling between them up to this point anyway. Like Tanya Harding was a. She was a raw talent. She was an uncut gem. You know what I mean? She, did, she didn't necessarily look the part, but she could play the part. In 1991, she was the first female uh, figure skater to, to land the triple axel, which is, you know, three full rotations, which is fucking impressive. Like I said, that's a 1080. Yeah. Like, suck it, Tony Hawk. And, <laughs> and you know, she's doing it on ice with no ramp. Like they're just, you just got to generate that power, and she had that power, and she had that ability. She was, she was a great talent, according to everything I watched. Because who am I to judge figure skating? But the, the Russian judge, <laughs> the Russian judge. Nancy Kerrigan had a much easier go of it, I think. You know where she was able to like. Uh, it, it came a little more naturally, but she didn't have to work as hard because she had the look that they were looking for. They kept referring to her as an ice princess. You it's know? just like, I mean, it's and like she, the music industry. Well, but she's, she, you know, she's, she's, she was long and thin and sleek and like the, and when she would stretch, it, it was really like aesthetically pleasing where Tanya Harding was a little more short. She was kind of, I don't want to say boxy, but she was like, she's stubby. She's compared to Nancy Kerrigan. She's a little stubbier. Yeah. She was, it, it, she was built shorter and yeah, yeah, yeah. and more compact. So stubbier. 
Right. And then they said on top we of that. We can talk shit on her now. We know what she did. They said on top of that. Made she, her a good boxer. <laughs> she could take a punch. Um, it, it, they said on top of that, you know, she would hang out at like pool halls and smoke cigarettes and she was, you know, she was a drinker and, but they, cause she's a lady. Well, and they said that was, that's what was so different between her and like Nancy Kerrigan, who was the exact opposite of that, who was, you know, all about the work and the dedication and the grace and the class. And, and then when I'm done, I cuddle up near the fire and drink tea with my kitten while I read a book. Right. I mean, that kind of thing. And so she was... <laughs> Don Yarding's and, like, put one more on the jukebox. Next round's on me, fuckers! Don't you have to skate in the morning? Fuck it, <laughs> we're doing it live. Um, so they, they were basically like building up this whole like overhyped like cat fight that was supposed to be when they met and they met and nothing ever happened. Like, remember when she had you physically assaulted? You guys should now duke it out. I mean, that would be legit. That would be a cool thing to do. But they like the other Olympic. Athletes I think the other the, the cool thing to do would be like, no, uh, maybe not today, <laughs> maybe not tomorrow. But she but gets one. You should be. Lo- you should definitely keep your eye looking around for like the rest of your life because you're getting one too. Be ready, Tanya. 65 years old. I was going to say, why? the year is 2031. (laughs) Tanya Harding, living in a trailer park, wonders why someone came and bashed her shins apart. That's where she started. She got like moved around and like had to park in friends' driveways and live in their car, live in their car and stuff like that when she was a kid. And like her parents would drop her off with somebody and then split and go look for work in like separate towns. And so she had kind of a rough upbringing. And I'm that's not saying what, I don't feel bad. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just saying it's funny that you, that you mentioned that yeah. because that's where, that's kind of where it would be, you know, kind of poetic justice to come full circle because you like, had the chance. And then the weird neighbor Tom, during one of the winter storms, just let his hose go out on the driveway, and that's what got me started as an ice skater. <laughs> right. That, had me in the first half. Not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> so. After 1992, Nancy Kerrigan started getting like endorsement deals. Like, you remember her Campbell's soup commercial where she was no. like skating out on the pond and then she stops and or uh, skating on the rink and she stops and she's like slow motion eating chicken noodle soup and it was around the same time as like the snowman that eats the soup and then it melts and it's a little boy. I mean, like I remember that one. I, maybe I'm like remembering it, but not remembering that it was Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah, it was. Like, yeah, it was totally like I, I. I just thought it was some generic ice skater chick, probably. Yeah, it was Nancy Kerrigan, um, but. Tanya Harding got, who was, you know, skating at the same level, got nothing. Pay left shoes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tanya Harding. Do you like shoes but want to pay less? Why do you, why does well, it boy, like, do I have a place for you. Why does it sound like she has a stoma? <laughs> because have you looked at pictures of her? <laughs> she looks like she sounds like she has a stoma. <laughs> She's, I mean... Pay less shoes. It's where I get shoes and pay less. <laughs> believe it or not, but it's in the name. Look at me, uh, Tanya Harding. Hello and goodbye. Watch your knees. <laughs> you just got a pipe. <laughs> Come and get some shoes here at Pay Less Shoes. Or guess what? Uh huh. I, I don't have to say it because I'm showing it. Bink. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah. Before the national championships, Tanya's husband bodyguard, Tanya's husband <coughs> and her bodyguard met to discuss how to ensure that she got to the Olympics and won the medal. Um, <coughs> they were pretty much like, hey, listen, you're not doing great. This is kind of your last chance. Oh, you think so, huh? So I got to resort to this. <laughs> Woke up and chose violence. <laughs> um, so, uh, Hold on, I'm just watching this Nancy Kerrigan. Campbell's chicken <laughs> soup. <laughs> um... So almost immediately, everybody thought it was Tanya Harding. Um, and then Nancy Kerrigan had to sit there. Like, she was in attendance for the national championships. <coughs> and she was sitting <coughs> up in the press box watching as Tanya Harding won her second national championship. You didn't mention at the end she fucking checks a hockey player off his skates. I forgot. <laughs> <coughs> um, and so, like, yeah. Basically, um, they both got awarded spots on the Olympic team after this event, but Tanya Harding had to threaten a $25 million lawsuit, and um, ultimately the uh, 
the committee said, well, we couldn't put together a credible case. So they let her on the Olympic team. <coughs> so, you know, that's a Nancy's like, why? Dude, imagine like imagine that like team meeting. All right, everybody huddle up. Listen, ladies, I know you're out here. I know you've given your best to get here except you. And I know. Well, listen, I gave my best and two thousand dollars. I know you get. I know everybody gave your best except you. And I know some of us have overcome adversity except you. And the whole trailer park thing. Remember, I'm glad everybody's here except you. And I think we can really go out there and we can win this. All right, ladies, hands in, not you. <laughs> I feel attacked. <clears throat> so, uh, Tanya Harding came in eighth at the at the Olympics. Um, Nancy Kerrigan got got second. She great got, job, everybody, except you, old eighth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yo, Ocho, <laughs> get out of here. Top seven, get dinner. <laughs> Hit the showers. Coffee's for clothes. Grab some pine meat. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, she got eighth. Uh, Nancy Kerrigan got silver. She she took second, um, which is is kind of like her fall from media grace because yeah. the picture, like, <clears throat> remember how everybody memed Michaela Maroney? Yeah. When she, she got second, like, she yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Nancy Kerrigan was kind of doing the same thing. Uh, except for it wasn't <clears throat> in the time of memes. It Well, it wasn't as adorable when she did it. Uh, I was going to say, was Michaela like, Maroney, like, made so a whole career off is, that, um, that frown. Well, what's her name? We were just talking about her. Oksana Bayul. Oksana Bayul. She took gold. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, Nancy Kerrigan standing there, like, waiting for her to get up on the podium. And she's like, oh, why is she taking so long? Like, hurry up. And she's just, like, visibly annoyed standing there waiting for this to take place. And then they put her, like, on a float at Disneyland. And she's doing this whole thing. And somebody got her on video, like, home video right up front. And she's like, this is so corny. This is stupid. This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. This is so corny, and I hate being here. <laughs> just suck it up. Yeah, she was just uh, not jacked about about being on a Disneyland float and being second place, and so <clears throat> there are worse places to be. But I think what happened was everybody built built her up so much, you know, like so much anticipation and excitement for what she what she was gonna be, and this whole like. They they already had her pegged as the winner against Tanya Harding. You know what I mean? Like this is this was her this was her David versus Goliath moment, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah, like her career yeah, defining yeah. moment. And and she loses to fucking Oksana Bayul. He lost to the Ruski. <laughs> We're still in the Cold War here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, it was everybody kind of got mad at her. But now she, I mean, like she's married, she's got a kid, like she still skates, she's still doing her thing. But she's not like the out in public. Like she's just happy. Like one of the other skaters was like, "Yeah, we've never seen her this happy. We're just happy for her." And she's like, "Yeah, because I don't have to wake up at fucking three in the morning and like skate <clears throat> every day now, right?" She can't can if I want to, but I don't have to. I can do that, but I don't want to. <laughs> right? Um, I just think of the Simpsons when the. Guy folded himself up and walked away on his ears. Uh-huh. I can do that. I just don't want to. Um, but yeah, they, so what happened was, you know, with having 125 million people tuning into this just to see this one practice session, yeah, it drew a lot of people to the thing. So, like, remember how I said they had three events a year plus the national championship? It went up to, like, 12 events a year. I, I was going <coughs> to say, because I feel like I, I knew a lot more about Michelle Kwan, and I just looked it up. It's because she was, like, the next generation. She benefited from that Exactly. Exposure. Well, they all did. Yeah. Every every single person in the sport, whether they liked it or not, benefited from that exposure, except Tanya Harding. Yeah. She's the only one who got nothing from it. I wonder what Tanya Harding's net worth is today. It's like 950. I'm going to look it up. It's 9.50, <laughs> not 950,000. $9.50. It's like, yeah, well, how much do you have? <laughs> I mean, until I went to the batting cages, I had 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, you ready? Yes. Tanya Harding, net worth. Hold on, no. Give, uh, let's do it over under. Okay. Um, you want me to give you the over under, or do you want to guess what it might be? You give, you give me a number, and then I'll, okay. I'll tell you. Okay, uh, over or. under five hundred thousand dollars. Ooh, under. Over under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Under. Over under one hundred thousand dollars. Under. Tanya Harding net worth. Tanya Harding, now known as Tanya Price, is an American former Olympic skater who has a net worth 
of thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I now I feel bad. <laughs> no, I mean, if she hadn't taken a lead pipe to her teammate's knee, I know, but I feel bad about like bringing up the fact that she's poor now. <laughs> I mean, she's doing better than most people. Yeah, and she's working. How am I gonna get my car out? <laughs> So, um, in 99, she was allowed to compete again. Um, they were like, hey, you're old as fuck now? Go ahead, jump on in yeah, there. Yeah, they, they, they let heard her... you tried out for celebrity boxing. Give it a year. Come do a little more ice skating. I think dumb, it was dumb. before all the celebrity boxing. Was... <laughs> they, uh, they, they let her compete again, and then um, a month later, <clears throat> she was arrested for assaulting her boyfriend with a hubcap. Oh, what a great choice of weapon. And in uh, 2001, she was offered an opportunity by a Vegas casino to come and skate there, uh, topless. To which I was just gonna say, oh, that's kind of cool. She like gets her own show. Like, yeah. what a fucking comeback! He said, topless. Yeah. To to which she said no. Um, and I guess during the investigation, like this is my favorite part. During the investigation, they were talking to her about her boyfriend or her husband, ex husband, I guess at the time, his involvement and her bodyguard's involvement and stuff. And she was like, look, they came up with this idea. They, you know, it was I had nothing to do with it. This was on them. I don't like, there's nothing I can tell you more than that it was their idea and I wasn't involved. And then they went to her husband and bodyguard and they were like, hey, look, here's the notes we have from our meeting with Tanya where she said, you guys did everything. And they were like, well, it wasn't us. Like it was. And so when they finally talked, she was like, wait, they shared the notes. And her husband's like, yeah, they showed us everything that you said. And she goes, well, that's not fair. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. So did you know, after celebrity boxing, Tanya Harding went professional for two years? Boxing? Yes. Nice. And her first fight was on the undercard of a Mike Tyson fight in 2003. Who'd she fight? Layla Ali? Uh, no, I, that's the only other female boxer I know. <laughs> Let's see. It says... Uh, her first professional fight was on the undercard of a Mike Tyson uh, Clifford Etienne fight in the February of 2003. While her in ring skills didn't exactly draw much praise, she did bring the fans and the cheers. Holden had heard about Harding's foray into the sport, but wasn't sold on working with her. And then he did, and she made them a bunch of money. Still, like almost a decade later. <clears throat> Good. Good for her. Doing something, you know? Yeah. Um, well, here, let's stay on boxing for a minute. In the 1988 Seoul Olympics, uh, Roy Jones Jr. versus Park Si-hun. Uh, this was the light middleweight gold medal fight. Uh, they were they were in Seoul, Korea. Um, Park Si-hun was a Korean fighter. Roy Jones Jr. from the United States. Um, he won. Park Park Si-hun won the fight, and it was literally the worst thing in his life, which is strange because <clears throat> you'd think. Winning a gold medal would be, like, the best thing in your life. Right. The thing that you've worked your entire life up to this point for. And you can see, like, they're standing there. The ref's re the referee's in the middle of the ring holding their hands, you know. And he does the... And raises Park Sihun's hand, and he's like... And so he goes over, and he, like, hugs Roy Jones Jr. and picks him up. And he's like, no. Nah. Pushes him down. He's mad. He's mad, yeah. mad. Yeah. Understandably. Um, here's some stats from that fight. Um, 86 32 in favor of Jones for punches landed. Uh huh. Uh, 303 to 188 Jones for punches thrown. And that's 28% to 17% strike rates. So, I mean, not landing all their punches, but I mean, they're just firing them. Right. Firing them. Right. That's in three rounds. The fight went three rounds. And like an Olympic, U.S. Olympic fight is three three minute rounds for men. Oh, shit. For women, it's four two minute rounds. But, so in th I mean, he averaged 101 punches thrown per round. Like, if I were to put three minutes on the clock right now, do you think you could throw 101 punches? <sighs> um, yeah, but I would <clears throat> fucking die of the stroke right after. Right. Now do it two more times. No. While I'm, dodging punches. I'm not gonna. Um, I can do that. I don't want to. <laughs> I can do that. I just don't want to. Um, so, yeah. After the fight, uh, three of the five judges scored in favor of the home hero, um, and Park si Hun won. Everybody pretty much knew that he didn't win. Yeah, including it looked like him during the announcement, I suppose. 
Yeah, in fact, I'll pull that video up in okay. just a second. But um, yeah, basically, uh, as a result of all this um, and, and an investigation, uh, two judges were banned for life by the International Olympic Committee. Um, the scoring system was updated, and they still never overturned the decision. So Park Si Hun still has the gold medal. A lot of times, too, though, and in, in my experience, well, not like my personal experience, but from what I can recall, like, okay, so like Reggie Bush had to give up the Heisman, but they didn't award it to second place. They're just not a Heisman winner from that year. You know what I mean? Like, <coughs> well, but see, like in the Olympics, what will happen is um, they'll, uh, they'll strip it. for Like if you got first place and I got second place, uh -huh. my, my silver goes to third. Bronze goes to fourth, and I get gold. Okay, so they do pass it down. Yeah, it's yeah, not like it, a vacated title that that right. Olympics or something. Okay. Yeah, because if you cheated, they just withdraw your stats, and everybody else's still counts. Okay, which makes that the gold medal time, and not your cheating ass time or whatever it was. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Nope, this isn't what I wanted. No, 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 no. This might be it. This looks like the full fight. Oh, well, let's do it. <laughs> Fuck the DMCA, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so here, I'll just show you the end of it. There, and hit that? Nope, hit that. Yep. And do that. I like that it's like the Korean. That's in Spanish, huh? I don't know, that's Russian right there. That's true. Все внимательно смотрят на членов жюри. Подбежал Кен Адамс. Что-то резко говорит. Три два. Ой, 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 So, like, the Korean athlete wins in Korea. Yeah. As a, a shock and statistics go the exact opposite way. It's like, how could this have happened? Yeah. And so he, he actually said that, that he wishes he never won. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing he can do about it. And there, um, he and Roy Jones Jr. don't have any bad blood. Like, right. You know, he, he they've never met face to face after this, I don't think. But he 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 said he's like, I know it's not his fault. He didn't rig the fight. Right. You know what I mean? You can and tell he, by his face. Yeah. You dude, did you <laughs> see how shocked he was? Yeah. He was like, he was legit. Like, wait a second. Um, am I getting Steve Harvey before getting Steve Harvey? Is dude, the one of the videos I watched, they were like, and Steve Harvey wasn't the referee, <laughs> and I'm like, get out. <clears throat> um. So Park is now a gym teacher, and he's a, he's a boxing coach for their national team, for okay. Korea's national team. And he he's said, like, he, I once beat Roy Jones Jr. No, he said he wants to restore honor by creating from scratch a legitimate gold medal boxer uh, okay. so that he can walk away from boxing forever. Okay. Because he doesn't want anything to do with it anymore, but he can't let it go until he honorably gets the medal that right, he was given right, under right, false right. pretenses. I see. So I got to say shout out to him for that. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's that, that, that is big dick energy right there for sure. Because I mean, I would just be telling everybody about the time I beat Roy Jones jr's ass. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, it was, it was fucking internationally recognized, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me. I'm not even surprised. That's just what I look like when I'm excited. Just walk into rooms and drop my medal on the table. Oh, excuse me. Didn't mean to. Just, sorry about Make that. Make way for gold medal athlete me. Um, also, Roy Jones Jr. held four titles across four different divisions at the same time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BDE, says Jim. Yeah, exactly. It is, man. It totally fucking is. Um, so that's about it for the Olympic stuff. Did you have any you wanted to bring before I, before I hit the last one here? Uh, is the last one. Deflategate? Yeah, no. No, this is one I kind of wanted to just. Point on I'm a Colts fan, so I know I figured you do this. So basically, January 18th, 2015, the Colts were getting just their fucking asses pounded by the Patriots. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's my whole thing is like, as a Colts fan, I found it so insulting that they, it was even a thing because it was like, yo, we lost 45 to seven. Like, it's like, yo, dude, we lost by five 
touchdowns. Yeah. So uh, if it had been like if we had lost by five, right, that'd have been like get that motherfucker and all. Where's that destroyed cell phone? Put it back together. Yeah, we are piecing this information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Together. No, we lost by five touchdowns. Yeah, well, and and only scored one. And so it, it, I mean, um, <clears throat> basically late in the first half, Dequell Jackson intercepted a pass from Tom Brady and then took the ball to the equipment staff. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know how you how, are you like familiar with the finer details of the of the whole ordeal or um I mean, yes and no. It's been a little it's been 5 or 6 years, right. but um essentially AFC Championship, Dequell Jackson makes an interception and essentially he was like, "How the fuck did I catch that?" Like yeah. <laughs> was like this ball is fucking squishy, bro. Right. And in in a game when the Colts are on a drive, they're using a Colts ball. And when the Bucks are on a drive, or uh, the Patriots are on a drive, right. they're using a Patriots football. Right. So there's an equipment guy who puts all that shit together and makes sure it's all at the, you know, because there is a pressure uh, gauge. A, well, there's there's a sliding there's scale a of window. where it can be. Yeah, there's a window of where so, the pressure has to be. Basically, Dequell Jackson took this ball to the equipment staff and they checked it. Yeah. Um, they informed the referees at halftime that the ball and the and the balls were checked at halftime. Um, 11 of the 12 footballs were underinflated by approximately two PSI, which doesn't um, sound like a lot, but it is a lot air up a, like a bike tire or a, like, and is knock it, it though? Like if I were to give you a football, if I were to give you a football at 11 and a half PSI, which is like a full pound below the minimum mm-hmm. and then hand you another one at 12 pounds. Like if I were to throw you one and then had you throw it back and then threw another one and had you throw it back, would you be able to tell the difference? I don't know, but, it, but you're also not taking a thousand snaps per year exactly and also like i mean like every time i pick up a football it's like the first thing i do is like oh how squishy is this because right. it's a little squishier i can fucking chuck this thing yeah you know? no, I, like, and i fully agree that like a softer ball like i mean how much easier is it to one one hand a fucking nerf ball over your head well, right but a, that's what i'm saying is like i think that for a dude who doesn't take a thousand snaps who's a who's a defensive back who gets an interception and goes <clears throat> it felt kind of funny. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that that's like I'm not saying he doesn't handle a football more often than someone who doesn't play football. We should we should do this experiment I'm just down. for just for fun I'm like in in the next couple of days just do it and post it on YouTube or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like I I think I think Deflate Gate debunked question mark. <laughs> Clickbait title. Yeah. It'll yeah, be all yeah. fucking super colorful and us on the front like what? and then we'll get some like emojis right in yeah, the middle yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, it'll be perfect. Sounds good. Um, so 11 of the 12 footballs were underinflated by approximately two PSI. Um, that's actually a little bit more than what they were under. They, were, they weren't inflated quite, underinflated quite that much. Um, but yeah, uh, after, the, after the kickoff for the second half, the balls were replaced and the game continued. Um, Patriots beat the Colts, scoring 28 of their 45 in the second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. You don't have to tell me. Well, no. My point, my, <laughs> my point is, after the balls were switched, they got over half their points. Right. So it's not like it was a football thing that was right, 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 right. that was keeping them there. Um it was the Colts having a bad defense in 2015. Except for Dequell Jackson. Well, I mean, it was <laughs> he only caught it cuz it was underinflated. So the next day a Colts reporter <laughs> tweeted that the Pats were going to be investigated for the deflated footballs. Um and the NFL was like, "Oh, fuck, they are?" <laughs> Shit. Means we got to do something. Um, on January 23rd, 2015, Tom Brady said, quote, I didn't alter the ball in any way. I, he looked right into the camera and was like, I, me, Tom Brady, did not alter the ball in any way. Me, myself, I, Tom, I, Justin Thomas, Senior. Thomas Brady, Edward Brady, did not, his name's Teb, alter the ball in any way with my own hands, me. <clears throat> um, uh, Bill Belichick. Said that the deflation. I also was, didn't uh, touch any footballs. What he said was, so, um, he said this is a result of a uh, of a rubbing process to break in the footballs that lose roughly one psi as a result. Uh, once the ball has reached its equilibrium, r- reached its equilibrium state yeah. would be un that would be unreasonable. Hi, my name is Jordan, and I am the uh, ball rubber for <laughs> the New England Patriots. My job is to take the ball and rub it so hard. Mm, yeah. I want to. I want to find so hard shapes. it loses one psi. But the equilibrium will be so good. It'll be so good. Fuck mm. Fucking Bill Belichick. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. I think if, I think I found. <laughs> yeah, you tell him. 
Yeah, let's hear let's hear old cutoff sleeves. What's uh, he got to say? Let me see if I can find it. He's like, you know, a Subway sandwich makes a great uh, meal instead of fast food. I like that he's doing Subway commercials now. I can't find it now. But basically, yeah, what he said was the ball, ha- once the ball hits its equal, like you, you inflate it. And then once it he- hits its equilibrium and like equalizes throughout, then it loses about a pound. Mm-hmm. So, like, Trust mm-hmm. me, Tom, his wife told me she had all these crystals. So we put them around the football. They told us that the energy was good. <laughs> Uh, and then we rubbed some of these oils on there, and that's what broke it in. And uh, uh, and even even Bill Nye, the science guy, was like, uh, "What Bill 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 Bill?" What Bill, Bill Belichick Bill just Nye, said was science guy. total and complete bullshit. Oh, really? Yeah, he said that's that doesn't make any sense. That's not a thing. Why does use buzzwords? Yeah, you, pretty much. And I mean, that's kind of how. Like, I can't find the statement, but it was something like. Where he's like, once the footballs are inflated to the to the twelve and a half psi, then you know they the equilibrium. They do the break in process, and then they hit their equilibrium, and it's not unreasonable for them to lose a, a, a one psi in that process, to which could be related to weather. And so there's um there are basically two days after this, the league interviewed a ball boy, base and the Pats turned in the footage of this ball boy. He took two bags of footballs from the equipment room. And carried him into the men's room and then emerged 90 seconds later with him. He's like, dude, it's the worst because I, all I do is rub my balls on him and now I'm on camera doing it. And <laughs> Tom, like, I, just I just wanted, wanted Tom, Tom to like third handedly touch my balls. <laughs> it's just the outtakes from Ted. <laughs> it was freaking awesome. Um, so, yeah, uh, basically the rules uh, I mean, counterpoint to that poor ball boy, too. He probably just had to take a wicked pisser. Yeah. He's like, fuck it, I'm going to take him in, take him out of the field. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not COVID times. When he was, <laughs> wait, it's not what? <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry. Stay out of the future. If he just takes him and, like, you know, throws him up over the stall or whatever, so they're just hanging yeah. there, like, in two bags tied together, like, I get it. You know, it's, it's not sitting on the wet floor because, for whatever reason, Gillette Stadium, I feel like the men's room floors are always wet. I don't think you're allowed to have a football stadium without wet floored bathrooms. I don't think you're allowed to have any stadium without wet floored <laughs> bathrooms. It's true. It's true. It's true. Um, and for some reason, it's like sandy. It's like they put kitty litter down and grit it up so no one slips. It never works. <laughs> Always wind up on my ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so basically, the rule is um, each team has to provide 12 footballs for the referees to test. Um, and the test is conducted two hours and 15 minutes before game time. It's funny because, like, it's like <clears throat> it seems like the test is like, eh, all right, cool. These are good. Like, we played men's slow-pitch softball. Remember how often a ball would get rejected because it had, like, a nick in it or something? Because we had to supply four balls at the beginning of every game. I don't remember. So, the, I, I'm T.O.'s team cab, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we had to supply That's four balls. I don't Each team had to supply four balls at the beginning of every game. And they had to be, like, of a certain, you know, certified for this, you know, league we were playing in, USAF, or whatever the fuck it was. Right. And... If it had, like, you know, someone had fouled it off and a little nick had been taken at, like, Carl, the bearded umpire, would be like, nah, this one's no good. Throw it back over to the dugout. And sometimes we'd be like, fuck, run out to your car. Do you have a fourth ball? Like, yeah. So it used to be, like, like keep an extra pack of three because we were getting rejected balls, like, almost every game in uh, men's slow-pitch beer league. Yeah, I don't really remember that. You were like, I'm over here first, baby. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, we're, we're up to bat. Whoa. Uh, yep. Yes, we, how, I, I play first with them here? now. How'd I get out here? <laughs> um, Rick, get back over here. <laughs> <laughs> Even the guy who couldn't think said something. Um, so basically, the rules say each ball must test between 12.5 and 13.5 PSI. Um, the Patriots balls tested 11.49, and uh, the lowest was 10.9. So, again... If they had won the game by a touchdown, right. I'd have a lot bigger problem. The but, problem with me, for me, <laughs> is that it went on for like four months. So I just had to fucking get it rubbed in my face that the Colts got shit on the AFC Championship game. Well, and then the Patriots went on and won the Super Bowl, too, if I'm not mistaken. So there's there's a little more to it than that, though. Um, well, uh, the rules say that if the ball doesn't meet the requirements, the refs can't – can they can use, like, the visiting team's balls. Mm-hmm. and But they have to report the issue to the commissioner. Got this ball. Didn't work. It was flat, you know, whatever reason. Right. This ball was rejected. It goes to the commissioner. He knows about it. And whatever. And that didn't happen here. Yeah. And it's, like you said, it's, if they'd won by whatever, 
like a field goal or a touchdown, it would be a different story. But isn't cheating just cheating any way you slice it? Like if you, yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you cheat and win by a touchdown, it's cheating and you won. If you cheat and win by ten touchdowns, it's cheating and you won. It's yeah. if you cheat and you lose by a touchdown, it's still cheating. Right. You know what I mean? Like it does. It doesn't change the fact that you shouldn't have done that. You ought not have done that to him. He's just a boy. He's just a boy. Boy, little fella. Um. So. The referees are the sole judge on this like ball legitimacy issue too. There's yeah. no like, there's no independent exactly. Party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's not there's not another person who comes and checks it out. It's it's the referee going. Ah, uh, you know what? This is a little, a little soft. Let's uh, let's get a different one. Yeah. Tell the commission that one got tackled on. It, they fell on it three or four times. It's a little squishy. Yeah. You know, because I would buy that. Right. You know, you fall on that thing. You got, two hundred twenty five pound running back carrying it who gets tackled by a 250-pound linebacker and fallen on by a 315-pound lineman. Right. All on top of this little tiny football. That's a lot of pain. I would imagine that a little bit of the air would go back out that needle hole, whether it wanted to or not. You know what I mean? Like that ball, I feel like, would probably be a little softer coming up than it was going down. It's like baseball. They go through, like, 40 <coughs> balls in a game. Like, Oh, yeah. Like, easy. I think it's funny that the NBA doesn't – let you keep a ball if it goes into the stands. Yeah, because like fuck that shit's expensive. <laughs> Those we things are like thirty bucks a ball. We like, don't get a discount. Dude, they're like one hundred and forty. Oh, the for like ones an they NBA use? like real leather indoor uh, only ball. They're like one hundred and forty bucks. Wild. Yeah, because we used to sell them at the uh, Grande Cinco. Oh. And they were always we had like three, and they'd sit up at the very top shelf with a ninety nine ninety nine sales sticker on them. Everybody like, hey, could you get me one of these nineteen ninety nine basketballs right here? Yeah, the one that glows in the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the grippy grippers on it. And, when you bounce it, it goes, ping. <laughs> and when you bounce it too much, it gets a fucking... The rattle? No, it gets the the wobble. Oh. It's all misshapen, and so you throw it in the air. It goes... Yeah. All right, kids, get out to recess. Yeah, Here's dude. a bald basketball that's shaped like an egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the public school system. Hell yeah. We live in a pretty decent part of California. <laughs> Don't fund it. We're doing fine. <laughs> um if the, so, if the ball again, if the ball didn't meet requirements, they could use the visiting team's ball, but they had to report the issue to the commissioner. And the referees were the sole judge of that. Um, referee, referees are handling the ball between every play. You know, I mean, there's never a play where they where they don't move the ball to the position that the guy got tackled in. They should have felt it before Dequell did. You would think. You would think they would have noticed it before before Dequell Jackson was like, "Hey, this <laughs> seems." You know what, Dequell? I think you're right. <clears throat> but also, um, well. So there's the uh, ideal gas law that says colder temperatures make the air pressure inside the ball go down and warmer temperatures make the air pressure. Yeah, inside but like twelve percent. Right. Not 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 that much. Yeah. Um and there is a, a a company called Exponent Aerospace Engineers who spent three months in the lab trying to recreate the issue. Like they recated the locker room at Gillette Stadium. They recreated a section of the field. They Seems like an entirely huge waste of time. These are the same guys that got called in by NASA when the Challenger exploded, and they're like, "We're just fucking bored right now." That's really. Like, all I mean, is. they basically their 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 deal is to like replicate real life scenarios to these situations yeah. and see how it would have. Like, played. trust us, this room matches the humidity. Like when it, Rob Gronkowski farts, and yeah. they they would like spray the ball down with water to simulate rain, and they recreated a section <coughs> of the field where they would. Like, you know, if like if they saw the ball get wiped down, they they wiped it down. And you know. what if Tom Brady retires in like ten years? Is like, yo, listen, I deflated the balls and I helped Aaron kill that guy. <laughs> Eat my butt. <laughs> I'm Tom. Fucking I'm untouchable. Brady. Just throws his rings at the camera and we'll moonwalks out of there. Everybody's like, fuck yeah, no, he's that's actually correct. He's yeah. not. He's not touchable. No, let it happen. Let it happen. Just the whole city of Boston would come to come to his aid. <laughs> Um, Get in the car. We're saving time. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much all I've got on that. Um, but it's, it, it, it's. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, that's the end of my freaking report. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I just think it's, I think it's kind of crazy to, th to think that it had this massive effect. You know what I mean? Like, but what I was going to say is I think that some of it may have been blown out of proportion uh, because of other things that were happening in the league at the same time. <laughs> this was also the same time that um, Ray Rice. Yeah. <laughs> what a piece of shit was, that guy is. Absolutely. But he was only suspended for two games. Initially. Initially. And then the footage came out and Roger Goodell had to handle that. But he. <laughs> oh, you did it like that. That's not what you told me. Yeah. 
and so they had to. Man, I didn't know that Vegas casino was gonna have a, a security a, camera, security camera in the elevator. Yeah, <laughs> and they were like, they they were the the NFL was already under fire for how they were handling that situation, and previous domestic issues before that. Right. Ray Rice was like the all right. He was far from the first someone. and far from the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just the one that they like. They made an example of, yeah. but they didn't initially make an example of him. No. And so that's why they were under so much fire. And then when the video came out, they were like, shit. <laughs> and so they put up, they put up a smoke screen with this deflate gate. And this is my personal theory. Right. Here. They put up a smoke screen with this deflate gate and they were like, look at how well we're handling this. We're just an investigation. It's lasting five months and we're doing this. And the, here's the, here's the fucking result. Colts and, fans are like, what? <laughs> Stop, we're already dead. And then there then he gets suspended for what was it, six games or whatever it was, or something. Yeah. And he appealed and got to play a bunch of games. Yeah, yeah he he appealed and then he, he was about to take it all the way to the Supreme Court and then was just like Fuck it. Yeah. Fine. And then, you know, there's all this evidence that like the, he and the equipment manager hadn't spoken for six months, but then as soon as the news of underinflated footballs came out, they they spoke th- uh, six times in three days. And then Tom like destroyed a cell phone, denied access to emails and stuff yeah, like that. And yeah, it's yeah. like, and what was it, John Madden, who said, you know, that's that's not something the coach is going to know about. Boom, it's going to be like between the quarterback and the equipment guy. <laughs> and I didn't know John Madden had a take on it. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's what he said. He said it's a quarterback deal. It's yeah. not a. It's not a coach deal. Yeah. The like, the equipment manager and the coach are not going to make a, dis- a unilateral decision about the football that everybody has to touch. So that's Tom Brady and Joe that's, Schmo equipment guy. Exactly. That's Tom Brady and the equipment guys making a deal. Hard to believe that Tom Brady and the equipment guy didn't talk for six months. Right. They, they, well, there was no like contact on their cell phones and stuff uh-huh. for six months leading up to this, and then as soon as the as soon as the it was a ding 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 ding. Yeah, they spoke six times in three days. Yeah. You know. So. And honestly, it could have been something. Yo, did you underinflate those footballs? Because I got to go give a statement. No, Tom. I, 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 I'm, your, I'm your guy, man. I, I like I handle your jock. <laughs> I mean, I took a Tommy. piss. I was gone for a minute, but Tommy, I handle your jock. Like, I, <laughs> why would I do that to you, man? All right, hey, it's fine, it's fine, it's You're fine. You're going to go see the Sox play in October, huh? Yeah, you and your wife still coming over for the barbecue? <laughs> no, cockeyed Wally, we're not. Like, Why? I invited Tanya Honey? Yeah, you invited me. <laughs> well, I'm God, already here. It's a couple days early, but I'm doing it. Everybody's here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much Deflate Gate. It ends with Tanya Harding having a barbecue with cockeyed Wally and Tom Brady deflating his balls. But yeah, that's. <laughs> Tony's like, I'll deflate your balls, you fuck. Get over here. Hell yeah. What a party. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's it. That's all I got. That's the end of my freaking report for real this time. Um, I appreciate uh, everybody for being here. Sports was, mo- sports was fun. What do you want to do next week? Um, you said you wanted to do mu- uh, movies. Yeah, at some yeah, point. yeah. Like, like movie tall tales and urban legends would be just fun. Yeah. Like, the classics come to mind, obviously. Right. Like Wizard of Oz and shit like yeah, Three Minute, three and minute Baby. Yeah. And clearly, all the ones that, like, that have been totally debunked, but like, there are ones that haven't been. Yeah. And, so and, and maybe we'll even like, ones. maybe we don't limit it to movies completely and like make it entertainment because also there's like, that Beach Boys track where you could supposedly hear a guy getting shot well, in the see, background. I want, if we're going to do movies, I, wanna, I was going to say I want to do a, a music one. Okay, so let's just we'll, – we'll look at movies. I have Because I have some cool stuff about backmasking. Okay. And like, um, like the Judas Priest song and mm-hmm. where they, he was on trial and he was like, why would I want to kill our fans? Right, like, right, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Chicago fucking rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in was always the name shit. of Lucifer. Spread the blood of the innocent. <laughs> nah, the Ozman was always straightforward with his messages. <laughs> Popeye's chicken is the shiznit. You just tear some up and let it slide down your throat hole. <laughs> Solid little Nicky, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. You got to throw in the facial expressions and you got it. <laughs> Only you could be that ugly. <laughs> Those are called trains. <laughs> Watch out for them. You got the hit in the face with a shovel at a young age look down. <laughs> Pretty good, man. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's what my parents used to say. My dad always told me I had the face for radio. 
<laughs> like, I'm the one who had the shovel. <laughs> Couldn't get anybody to pay enough attention to do it, though. I had to set it up in the backyard and run He's into like, it. I tried to have my wife's bodyguard's buddy do it, but <laughs> he wouldn't, wouldn't man up. Said he couldn't hit a kid, so I said, fuck it, I'm doing it myself. Too goddamn expensive. <laughs> Too goddamn expensive. Um, all right, uh, Jesse, tell people where you're, where, where you're at, where they can find you, what's, what's going on. Tell them something. Something. Tell them something good. How uh, wow. Cromulent Jesse, uh, anywhere that... There, it's Cromula Jesse at that's where Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Those four places you can find me. Mainly Twitch though. That's where I hang out. Twitch. See you there, man. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's what I got. That's what. That's I'm the doing. end of my freaking report. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm out here doing. Laugh that I hate Wyatt. <laughs> it made me poop red. <laughs> I thought it was robot but scary. <laughs> no matter how many wires the child eat. He will not become a robot. <laughs> the end of my freaking report. Good job, Russ. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and just one for the road here, because we talked about it. That's the, uh, that's the dress that she was wearing. This is her. This is moments before. Before she <laughs> was Yeah, like she walks down this thing. And it kills the camera. And that's like 10 seconds later. So the dude just bashed and ran? Exactly. Why? 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 Uh, I don't know. It's some hard, hard black stick. Something really, really hard. And like, dude, you, we've all been like, we've all got the thigh job before, right? You just got some sort of thigh where you're like, motherfucker, I want to die. So imagine it being somebody deliberately aiming, which to me it seems like they're probably aiming for the knee. Yeah. Right? That would be She's probably. taller than I remember. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're gonna do it. <laughs> I was practicing her height without skates on. This way. Frank, went down that way. He's a white guy, tall, leather jacket. <laughs> tall white guy with a with a leather jacket on. Around an ice skating rink? No way. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was, I mean, that's, that fucking, that's the saddest shit. Like I'm sitting here and I'm laughing because of the memes, but I'm, it's not. Well, it's, also think about like when you first see that, she's like a woman, an adult woman. And you're like, whoa, that old lady got bashed. Now I see it. I'm like, she is like, you know, I'm, I'm 10 years older than she was in that clip. Exactly. And to me, I'm like, dude, she barely looks like, she looks like a teenager. If you yeah. were like, she's 19 in this, I'd have been like, yeah, yeah she that's, probably that, is. that tracks. Like, yeah. Yeah, no. So you're like, oh, look at that small child who just got back. Like, that's what your, your yeah. mind goes to when you see someone like, and how the fuck are you going to defend yourself on a on <clears throat> the plastic clips that go on your fucking ice skates? Even yeah. if you try to juke, I imagine. Yeah, you're you, rolling your ankle yeah, and you're yeah, out anyway. Yeah. Your movement's probably pretty limited. Yeah, and like, I think it was, I think it was like a, he was waiting there, like, like waiting for her. Bonk and ran. And then he just went. And then booked. And, yeah. So. Fuck. He did it at like, the beginning of that tunnel, too. He was running down that tunnel going, fuck, 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 fuck. Sticking and moving around people. Get out of the way. Pushing people into the laundry basket. And it goes rolling through a fruit stand. and <laughs> it's Like a classic 70s chase scene. <laughs> Bunch of uh, Starsky and Hutch style. Yeah, like Will Ferrell running to the news station when he <laughs> finds out Veronica Corningstone's about to go on. He's just like fucking knocking people over. Dun, 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 dun. Steals that guy's cigarette. The guitar that goes. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Ron didn't want Veronica to read the news. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's the that's the end. We're done here. Um, go me. fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie's gonna be like, <laughs> uh, Ron, I have to fire you. I have to fire you, Ed. Bing, bang, boop. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm gonna leave it. I'm not even gonna say see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. No. Don't say. Bing, bang, boop. See you next, see you next Tuesday. Tuesday. Don't say see you next Tuesday.